Welcome back to the Anxious Tradeswoman podcast. I am your host, Louise, as a party, teaching you all the things that I've learned through the years, through the tears, so you don't have to. I'm a heavy vehicle and plant mechanic by trade, and now I'm a life coach for tradeswomen and tradies. And this is episode three of the podcast. This is part two in the Managing Anxiety series. So thank you for coming along to episode three with me. We are throwing perfectionism in the bin to get this recorded. Uh, So, and quite ironically, we're talking about managing anxiety, which is what recording this podcast is causing for me. But we are managing it and we are getting through. So thank you. So, This part two for the managing anxiety is talking about mental health. So before I go into this element, I really wanted to share with you that I'll be talking about my own experiences and knowledge with mental health. And just as a warning, my experience does include suicidal thoughts. Um, If you guys need any help or support, please contact, contact Lifeline or if you want any support, there's also the TX, the Trade Mental Health Care Service, um, or see your GP. But please keep yourself safe. And I wanted to let you know that you are wanted and you are loved. So let's get into it. So what I mean by mental health is two main things. How you feel you react to different situations and how they impact the way that you think and feel. There are two main reactions or feelings that can come up when we're talking about mental health. So depression and anxiety are the main two. These two feelings can come at different levels with their highest levels being self-harm or suicide. So the reason why we're talking about, the reason why we talk about self-talk before our mental health is because in my experience, my self-talk has had a great impact on my mental health and my awareness of my mental health in a positive way. By we by being aware of how I talk to myself, it has allowed me to better manage and also communicate my mental health needs. The purpose of being aware of your mental health is important because it allows you to use the tools that you have that you need to stay mentally healthy. When we have the tools we need in place to manage our mental health, we're able to navigate the world, which sometimes can be unkind. We can navigate it both safely, physically and mentally. The benefit of understanding your mental health is you can implement tools that support you in your lifestyle. Now I want to share with you my personal journey with my personal mental health. So in 2020, I was diagnosed with PMDD, which is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. I have been seeing my GP and counsellors and psychologists for about five years at this point, and I would go through cycles where I would be perfectly fine and then very perfectly not fine. I felt I didn't fit into any of the boxes, anxiety or depression, and no one had put me in those boxes. But I would spend a few weeks feeling normal and a few weeks feeling not normal, where I would be anxious, depressed, had mood swings to the point where I would be suicidal in these times. Everyone told me I was fine, I was high achieving, I could public speak, I was a normal functioning adult. So I started to track when these were happening and I realised it was a few weeks before I got my period that it would really hit me. So I told this to a doctor who handed me a pamphlet and said it was just PMS and I would be fine. And this doctor, this was the first time I had gone to a doctor and said, I am feeling suicidal before I get my period. And when she just handed me the pamphlet, I was distraught. I was like, I've just bared my soul to you and you hand me a pamphlet and tell me I'm going to be fine. I was not impressed. So after that, I went a few more months and then I went to my local doctor, so my normal GP. I had gone to a different doctor just because it was just like such a push for me to say something about my mental health like, and talk about it 
to that extent and I had wanted to start fresh with someone and just come in with that and have them manage that but um but it that obviously didn't work so I went to my normal GP and I told her about what had been going on and she told me about premenstrual dysphoric disorder she led me to a website to do some research but that's not all she did she started the discussion about me going on antidepressants to help manage it so easily said premenstrual dysphoric disorder is extreme pms so your normal hormones your hormones are normal and your brain pretty much has an allergic reaction to your normal hormones so as a female in a male dominated trade I was really trying to deny the fact that my cycles had any effect on me and my work, which is part of the reason why I did not put the two together, my mental health and my cycle for such a long time. Even just researching PMDD and finding out more about it has allowed me to manage it so much better because I have the tools in place that are specific to me and my needs. So some of the things that I put in place is managing my schedule around my cycle, getting more sleep when I need it, and also knowing when to push hard on projects and when to take a step back. So I am on antidepressants and it really helps me manage my symptoms. I'm actually at the point of starting to wean off them. So I will keep you posted. (laughs) So I would really like to share with you a question that can help you navigate your next steps to support your mental health. So the question is, is this a reasonable reaction to this situation? Now I want to give you an example of me answering this question in regards to my own experiences. So in the part of my cycle where my mental health tends to go a bit haywire, if a co-worker looked at me in a not super happy and positive way, it would send me just spiralling, thinking that they must think I'm shit at my job, that I shouldn't be here and that I'm no good. Then I would just start saying these things to myself over and over and over again, that I'm no good, that I shouldn't be here. And once I stepped out of the situation used my circuit breakers like the previous episode and changed my self-talk I would ask myself is that a reasonable reaction to someone simply just not smiling at me I look at the whole picture because yes I have been in situations where this has been happening over and over and over again like someone not talking to me someone putting me down and if someone is treating you badly then It might not be your mental health. It's probably having an impact on your mental health, but you need to get out of that situation. But in this particular situation, this was a one-off. This guy would be amazing to me. You know, he was just busy thinking about class or something. It wouldn't say hello to me, but it sent off this massive reaction in my head. And usually it was just before I got my period. So I decided that that was not a reasonable reaction to have to that specific situation after taking into the whole picture into account and that I might need further help and support to manage what was going on inside my head. So I personally then went to the GP, got on a mental health plan, started the procedure to look at medication while also seeing a counsellor. And also personally now, Um, I don't see counsellors as such anymore. I have life coaches, business coaches um, that help me. I found coaching to be really, really, really beneficial. Hence part of the reason why I then became coach. But anyway, there are many different ways that you can go if you decide that you might not be having a reasonable reaction to the situation. So you can call TX, the free trademark mental health call service, Uh, If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see that I'm wearing my undercover TX shirt. Um, I love trademark. It's amazing. But anyway, uh, you can call Lifeline or you can make an appointment to see your GP. So with this, like your mental health, it's such a different story for everyone. And there's so many different things that can come up. And even looking at the bigger picture, like I've... I personally am not diagnosed with ADHD, but I do know I have a lot of the tendencies and a lot of 
the support and the suggestions that are out there on the interweb and in professional development for ADHD people tend to work. They, they're beneficial to me. So sometimes you might go down a path where, you know, you might not actually formally go and get diagnosed, but if you find resources that help you and help you manage, use them. No matter what they're labelled, if they help you, use them. And there's so many different things. There was um, a girl that I mentored like a while ago and she was going through her own journey of working out what was going on with her mental health and it turns out uh, she had a panic disorder. Um, and then, when you know, when we look at different things, there's, you know, also being on the autism spectrum, which can have an impact on how you – every like, I'm not an expert, um, but – you know, picking up on social cues and social signals um, can have an impact on you in the workplace. So if you, you know, have autism or, you know, you find that you have some of the tendencies, then you can get help for that. And, you know, there's different ways and means on going about that. Generally, overall, see your GP. I'm, like I said, not an expert. But please, you don't have to suffer is the main thing. Like, you don't have to suffer and you're not alone. Being stuck in your own head and battling with your mental health can feel like a really, really, really lonely place. But it's not. You're not the only one who's ever been depressed. You're not the only one who's ever had suicidal thoughts. You're not the only one who's been so anxious they can't even function. You're not the only one who's ever had a panic attack. You know, you might not want to have these things, which most people tend to not want to, but you're not alone, you're not broken if you do have these things going on in your life. So one of the things that I do with my coaching is help you implement the tools that you have in your life. Um, I've worked with people with ADHD um, and just different ways of managing your mental health. So like I said, I'm not a mental health professional, but if you have tools and resources that you have been given, but you're not sure how to integrate them into your life as a tradie, then that is definitely something that I can help you with. Um, I would really love to be able to support you to support yourself. Like you really have all the tools you need within you and you know how to find them. So... I've got another sponsor for this episode. So the sponsor of this episode is Middies. So if you're – Middies is a women's underwear brand. Um, If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm quite obsessed and I literally don't own any other underwear. Um, They are boxer underwears and they're comfortable, they're practical, they're stylish. They've got a whole range of colours. Um, And I do have a discount code for you if you do decide. Um, So the discount code is Louise as a party for 10% off. There will be information about that in the caption below. So a bit of uh, finishing on a lighter note on kind of a bit of a heavy episode talking about mental health. But realistically, like (laughs) good underwear is, is good. Like you need to get yourself some middies if you are struggling to find underwear that is comfortable. But anyway, a bit of a change of tone. Like I said, this is part two of the anxiety series. I do have a part three, um, which will also be released on the same day. So if you are going to jump over and listen to that right now, I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>